Hey, good evening. I'd like to call to order the August 20th, 2013 City Council meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation. God, uh, help us tonight uh, to make the proper decisions uh, for the people of Avalon. And also, bless our men and women in the armed forces and keep them safe. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the kind words, Ralph. Uh, roll call, Denise. Council Member Hernandez. Here. Council Member Morrow. Here. Council Member Olson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ponce Here. and Mayor Kennedy. Here. And I have a quick announcement that this governing body this evening will be holding three separate meetings, the City Council, the Avalon Municipal Hospital Board of Trustees, and the Avalon Housing Authority Board of Commissioners, and they will re not receive any extra pay. Thank, uh, thank you for that announcement, well, Denise. Can't catch a, can't that should let the wind out of all of our sails, didn't it? Can't catch a break. <laughs> uh, any other announcements, Denise? Last week's paper, we had advertised that there will be a public hearing on our fee schedule. The first one is for next Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. The following that will be a special meeting, and the second um, public hearing for our fees will be at the regular scheduled meeting on Tuesday, September 3rd at 6 p.m. Thank you, Denise. Next Wednesday. Any other announcements, Council? Oh, good. Written communications. Anything, Denise? Presentations. We have a presentation this evening from the Catalina Island Medical Center. Good evening, members of the council. Mayor, I'm John Farrell, the hospital CEO. I just wanted to introduce you tonight to Tracy Matthews. She's the stepping into health coordinator. She's new to the community. She's new to our hospital. She's the newest member of our clinical team, and I didn't want her to feel alone in front of all of you, so... <laughs> Bear with me for a second while I introduce you, but we're very pleased to have Tracy with us. She's a doctorate prepared nurse. She's done a great job in the three or four months that she's been with us. She and her daughter have moved to the community. She's been very engaged with the Stepping Into Health. It's a new program that the hospital started up a little less than six months ago with a grant from United uh, Uni Health of $200,000, and we're just delighted we were able to recruit such talent as Tracy, and so she's going to give you a presentation tonight on the program. Yes. Thank you, council members, for, for your time tonight and for the audience as well. Um, I'm excited to talk about this program. I'm just going to hop over here and turn on the presentation. How's this? Oh, much better. Much better. Thank you for that pointer. So as Mr. Farrell was saying, um, we have we've just been blessed to get this um, grant from UniHealth to put on this program that we've called Stepping Into Health. And I'm looking forward to, to sharing it with you and to the entire community. Um, the, the program is, is based on the obesity epidemic, which is, which is a national open epidemic. Um, and, and we're only seeing increasing rates as time goes on. Um, it's, we have alarming rates. I mean, more than 37% of all adults are obese, and 17% of children and adolescents are obese. And when I say obese, that's not overweight, that's obese, which is measured on your, your uh, body mass index score. But it's got, um, you know, obesity comes with it many, many complications and chronic long-term diseases. 
So Catalina, the, the data that we've looked at from our medical center records shows that um, here on our island that we have even higher rate of, of obesity and diabetes. So getting this grant is, is in particularly important for, for the community. And, and it affects all of us, um, all taxpayers. It's not something that we can, we can no longer just turn our head to, the, the, to this problem and, and look at it as somebody else's problem because we truly are all affected. So I, I'd like to show a short clip, a video that's put on by the HBO documentary called Weight of the Nation, just a few minute video if it works. Okay, so yeah, that was just one brief, um, brief excerpt from this um, documentary that is, as I said, called Weight of the Nation. Um, it's an excellent film, and, and part of our educating the community is going to be um, screening. We're going to be doing screenings of that. We did our first one last night, um, which was very successful. It, it, um, the longer version is um, it's pretty powerful and makes people understand just exactly how tremendous the problem is and what all of the consequences are. So, that said, that said, so Stepping Into Health was created to be a solution, at least here on the island. And we're funded for two years, as um, Mr. Frail said, from UniHealth Foundation. And, and our mission with this program is to address, address obesity and the complications that go with it by educating and, and all of the, so we have cardiovascular health problems, we have diabetes as, as a problem. And so I just want to make it clear um, that contrary to common belief, it's not a weight loss program. I am not Jillian Michaels, <laughs> this is not the biggest loser, however, weight loss we assume and hope that will be a result of the program but it really gets down into um, chronic disease management and preventing these diseases so um, there's lots lots going on that, that we have planned 
for that. Um, one of the programs is that we're really gearing up to start, and I'm actually going to Pittsburgh next week to, to learn more and go through a, uh, one of their training workshops, but it's called the Group Lifestyle Balance Program, and <clears throat> it's an evidence-based protocol that was modeled from the NIH-funded Diabetes Prevention Program, and that's kind of what our whole grant truly is, is about. Um, it was modeled after that. So we do education, encouragement, and we really work with individuals and their families. So we encourage families to participate together. Um, and as you can see at the bottom, it's, it's designed for the, um, not necessarily diabetics. No, diabetics can participate if, if they um, would like to. But, um, and, and we put overweight, so not o obese. Um, it's the people right before the problems. You know, and, and also, certainly we'd like to include people that do have the chronic problems, but we also want to capture people before they get to the problem. All right, so once, once these um, individuals from the community, and it is open to everybody, it is free to participate, um, what they will be given or be able to do in this year-long program is we start with a kind of a core program and it's 12 weeks in a row and then there's a four bi-weekly bi sessions and then we have an ongoing support system for six months and so when the group meets together evidence shows that um, when there's accountability as a group that the success and outcomes are much better so um, <clears throat> it's really very exciting we've got people signed up we've got a few classes already lined up um, if anybody's interested please see me afterward I can get you it just signed up. Like I said, it's a free program. <clears throat> and we just really, as a community, need to take advantage of this while we have it. So the reason I'm here, really, is, is to kind of engage our community leaders and the community to, to really help support and, um, and work with us. Because we cannot do this alone. This takes a full community, takes a village to raise a child. So, um, so that's our hope, and, and we've got lots of different, you know, things going to incorporate the community. It's one arm of this, the study, if you will, is a community component. Um, one of the things we're doing is we'll be collaborating with the, the city's Safe Route to School grant, which was, uh, um, apparently it's been a few years, and <clears throat> so we've, we've been working together, and we've actually hired the same um, outreach coordinator so that we can really work together and not, not work parallel and, and waste funds or waste time. So I'm excited about that piece. Um, we've been working on an advisory committee and different work groups. Um, this is still a work in progress, but we have met and will continue to meet quarterly. So um, I would it is wide open. We'd love to have community leaders, government leaders involved as well. So if that's something that you're willing to do on a voluntary basis, we'd love that. You can contact me. So, um, you know, in addition to government leaders, at school officials, we work with the school, which they've been wonderful. But, um, you know, developing curriculum and getting get healthier foods and getting this, there's another program called this, the Salad Bar Program that's based out of Riverside. So we're looking at different models that, that are all really exciting. Um, but but we need help. We need the help of the community. And so that's that's what I'm here to, to kind of ask for. So now I'll, I'll open that up for questions or comments. Bob? Yes. Can I go? Go ahead. Um, I can see a number of people that were there at the meeting last night. I attended the meeting representing the council. Um, diabetes is a big, big issue. It costs the country a lot of money. Um, and what was surprising to me is the reason why we got the grant is because our demographics were similar to Santa Ana. Now, in Santa Ana, community that's really in distress when it comes to overweight, diabetes, and all that. And because our demographic is close to Santa Ana's demographic, we were able to get that, um, we were able to get that, uh, the grant, right? Yes, I think that, that certainly and, plays a part. 
And um, so <clears throat> the, the, the big effort, the Hispanic community, believe it or not, the Hispanic community has a one chance in two, 50% chance of having diabetes. That's awful. And, and that was the demographic that Santa Ana has, and we have, I guess. So what I'd like to do is maybe monitor what they do, go to their meetings, maybe report back to the council on, what they're, what, on, on their, uh, their progress. Uh, they're they're going to need they're going to need a lot of help, um, and that you know we could probably give them a little bit of help, you know, helping them with grants and things like that. Um, it's a worthwhile effort, and um, so there's one, two, three, four, at least four people in there that were there at the meeting last night, five, and um, so they're really serious about it. And um, excellent. Well, if you can represent the council in that regard, that'd be awesome. Great. Thank you. I'll do it. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. And anybody else is welcome to participate as well. So it sounds like you need community support. So those out there paying attention, yeah. sign up. <laughs> sign up. And Come you know, help. We're, we're doing social network networking with Facebook. Lend a helping hand and, uh, and get the business community in behind you, too. And, Excellent. And, uh, you know, a lot, of this, a lot of this can start at the office, too. There's a lot of you know, companies on the mainland that have you know, a fitness requirement as part of their, their daily routine, and I'd like to encourage that. It may be something that we could maybe put in our MOUs of, of city employees, and we can take the lead and try to make that happen. So that would be, that would be intelligent. Smart. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone in the audience have any questions or comments? I do, I do. Um, the clinic number is uh, 310 210096 Perfect. Oh, and I gave you all some handouts, too, just some questions and answers stuff. Thanks for your all attention. All right, thank you. Thank uh -huh. you so much. Oral communications. Anyone in the audience care to address the council for any item that is not currently on our agenda? You may come forward. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Hi, guys. Are you going to be asking for money? Not. Okay. Yet. Not later. yet. Not yet. Later. Okay, later. <laughs> no, I wanted to uh, remind the community on behalf of the city council and the city attorney that this Thursday, August 22nd, from 6 to 8 p.m. here at City Hall. We, the City Council, will be having a joint meeting with the Chamber of Commerce through their monthly chamber mixer here at City Hall to uh, let the community have an opportunity to meet the two candidates for City Manager for the City of Avalon. And again, that's this Thursday in just a couple days from 6 to 8 right here at City Hall. We'll begin here in the council chambers, opening up a regular meeting, since all of you will be here. And then we'll move out into the courtyard, and you'll have an opportunity to talk with the two candidates, meet them, and then uh, give any feedback through the city attorney's office for here. Right. Yeah. We'll see you then. All right. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. How do we move to the uh, Avalon Municipal Hospital Board of Trustees meeting? While you're in the room. <laughs> Roll call, Denise. Yep. Trustee Morrow. Here. Trustee Olson. Present. Trustee Kennedy. Here. Trustee Hernandez. Here. Chairman Ponce. Here. Uh, any announcements? No. no. Written communications? Presentations done? Uh, anyone wishing to? Comment on issues with the hospital that are not on the agenda? We know one run up front. Consent calendar. We have two items on the consent calendar this evening. The first one is actions from the July 16, 2013 Hospital Board of Trustees meeting. The recommended action is to approve those. Uh, the second item is the Chief Financial Officer's report. Um, the statement for June of 2013 and recommended action is to receive and file the report. 
Anyone wishing to pull an item? I'll make a motion to approve the July trustees actions and June's financial statement. Second. Call for a vote. <coughs> General business? Oops. Oops, All Fine. eyes. Okay. General business, anything? Chair's report, I have nothing. Members' reports? Nothing, then we're adjourned. I call the council meeting back to order. Uh, consent calendar, Denise. We have five items this evening on the consent calendar. I am removing the actions, number one. No comments only. Number two is expenditures <laughs> for approval. It's warrants in the amount of $150,840.06. Number three is expenditures for approval. Warrants in the amount of $212,303.51. Payroll in the amount of $217,157.68. For a total expenditure amount of $429,471.19. Fourth item is the adoption of an ordinance amending the municipal code to expand the areas where a water site permit is required and to de determine that the amendments are exempt from the California Environmental Quality Act. This ordinance was introduced at the last city council meeting. All further readings were waived. The recommended action is to adopt the ordinance amending Chapter 2, Harbor Regulations of Title 10 of the Avalon Municipal Code to expand the areas where a water site permit is required. Item number five is to adopt the ordinance of the City of Avalon adi adding Chapter 20 to Title 5 of the Avalon Municipal Code to expressly define medical marijuana dispensaries and mobile marijuana dispensaries and clarify that such dis dispensaries are unlawful in the city and determine that the ordinance is not a project under CEQA. Recommended action is to adopt the ordinance. Thank you very much, Denise. Uh, would any member of the audience care to discuss any of the items on our consent calendar? Does anyone run forward? Council, uh, any direction on items two through five? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve two, three, four, and five. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Call for a vote, please. All ayes. General business. First item in general business is the appeal for denial of a special event permit for the Catalina Air Show. I think we're all up to speed as to why we're here this evening. Um, a letter of denial was sent to the Catalina Air Show, and the coordinators of the Air Show have appealed this decision. Anyone here representing the Air Show? Come to the podium and speak your mind. So, <clears throat> Bob? Yes, sir. Um, I have to recuse myself on advice uh, from the city attorney okay. because of my affiliation uh, with uh, the paddlers. Okay. So I will leave. Or. Good evening. I'm back. <clears throat> Let's see. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to the council for all the extra work and to the city staff for kind of just wrinkling everything up here. We, we work really hard at this air show and it's, it's um, taken a long time to get to this point. We really, really don't want to lose an opportunity to have a great event. I had a 20-minute conversation with Billy today on the phone, and he's pretty ambitious about working together. Um, I just want to make sure that your decision tonight isn't wholly based on that we're stepping all over the outriggers and that it has other other ramifications. I, I know that you'll probably explain some things, or hopefully you will explain some things to us. Um, but I just want you to just relax for a minute and listen to what I have written down here. I know there's a lot of um, politics or maybe some personal issues with 
with how the air show was last year and who's involved and all these things. But I want to tell you, we are working hard to make this a great show for a great community. And it's just the beginning of what this air show can be. So if you give us, give us a chance to work with the outriggers this time, we won't be back on their weekend unless they want us back. <laughs> and we have already looked at a date next year because I hear the jazz tracks may be dropping the first weekend in October. So that would solve that problem. Um, planning an air show or any event can be very complex. We are dealing with many agencies, businesses, performers, and volunteers. No small group can accomplish this job without help. It takes cooperation and teamwork by all concerned, and that includes the city, the businesses, the volunteers, everyone, all of us at home. Everyone has a stake in this because this is we aren't making money, but the city stands to lose if we don't get an air show this year. Quite a bit of income. Um, we need to work together in order to solve those issues and help make these events successful. In the interest of our city's economy, we need to remain open-minded and flexible. Repeat events like this only take shape when improvements are made as years pass. So, you know, we're just at the beginning. We've only done one. We've never, ever done one. We've done one, and I think it worked okay. So now we're on number two, hopefully. I remember the outrigger race from way back when I was little. The men used to paddle over. And then they used to celebrate like crazy, and for some reason or another, now the women paddle over and the men paddle back because they adjusted their show so it would work a little better for how it affected the community. The kind of the same with the rugby. You may remember 40 years ago, there was rugby here, lots of rugby. But it was pretty rowdy in town, and so rugby disappeared for a long time, and I'm really happy to see that it did come back. Um, we did have a conference call with the harbor master and um, the mayor and Councilman Olson, Rock Goslin, Dan Tekanoff, and Billy on a speakerphone and myself, and, and he was pretty motivated at that time, and that was about a month or five weeks ago. And that was the first time we actually discussed some of the challenges that we have working these two events together. And he, he is also a pilot. He was very motivated in listening to what we had to say, our suggestions. And although if he had a choice, of course, can you just make the air show on a different day? That's not that easy. But he said, if, if it means working together to make both events great, then we'll work with you. We've come up with a plan today that we won't move the finish line. We won't hold up their awards program. We will only help them find moorings. And that's, that's where we ended today, talking with, with Billy. Um, now, regarding emergency planning and, and that, I've heard a little bit of um, discussion about the fire department, the city fire department's not in the loop, we don't even have a resources plan, who's got an emergency plan? Well, Gary Black from LA County Fire has been working really hard on the emergency plan and um, the flight demonstration portion of the event takes place in his jurisdiction, outside the city's jurisdiction. So he is the lead on that. And, and um, he and the Los Angeles County Fire Department will again take the lead emergency authority and be incident commander of that event. So he writes the plan, he includes the necessary resources, and he sits at the command post with the other command staff, the other event command staff, as he did last year. So when we get an approval to have our event, then he will add what resources from city and wherever and request their services as necessary and then the plan will be complete. But right now, it's, it's hanging. We do have two fully staffed dive teams, one from the Baywatch lifeguards from coming from the mainland that we've contracted with, and another one from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department that are gonna stand by and be a dive team. And then they also are interested in doing a uh, helicopter water rescue demonstration on the water during the show. So that's where we sit with them. Many of our local sponsors are repeat sponsors from last year's show, and um, they indicated to me 
That indicates to me that they believe in the event, its future, and they probably made a little money on it last year. So we're only thinking that it'll only get better for them. And if, if they're confident in us again to even come in, some of them with a little more money and a few more hotel rooms, then I think we're going in the right direction. Um, we've been in touch with the uh, Experimental Aircraft Association, the EAA, which a few of us probably know about. Um, they have a program out of Long Beach. Well, actually, they're all over the nation, but out of Long Beach, their Chapter 7 has a Young Eagles program where they fly kids from ages 8 to 17, they give them demonstration flights for free to encourage them to consider aviation as a hobby or even a career. And they've been very successful. That program has flown over one million young eagles over the, across the nation. And um, that's their motivation, is to get more people into, into the world of aeronautics. We were hoping to have an uh, information contact booth down on Front Street and also up at the airport on the following display day, where all the airplanes would be out on display and the pilots would be up there. And the kids could come up and potentially get rides. Now, I understand the airport's really going to be busy, and they may or may not have room for one more moving part up there. So the EAA, EAA could come at any weekend after the air show when the kids are still pumped up from the air show and give them rides. But they could sign them up now, and then they could come back and meet them at the airport. So that, that's, that's a pretty win-win thing, I think. I, I have a personal interest in that program because I... Uh, my, my, I'm a pilot, and my first introduction to flying was in high school here in Avalon, and my uh, teacher, Norm Perlis, asked the kids who wanted to go for a ride in an airplane. Well, I do. And uh, so a few of us raised our hand, and the following Saturday, I brought my $2 for airplane fuel and met him at the plaza, and we went to the airport. So that's why I think this is cool. If we could get just a couple of kids out of this town to start that, then we've, we've, that mission has been complete and successful. You may know that a few of the scheduled um, aerobatic pilots are going to be featured on a Discovery Channel program that's going to air sometime, I believe, in early 2014. Uh, they're following um, aerobatic pilots through this summer season of, of uh, air shows, and they're featuring a couple of them that happen to be coming to Catalina. So they're going to come with them. And they're going to sit out on the water and film a great portion of the event with Avalon Bay and the casino in the background. And I think that's a pretty valuable piece of free um, advertisement for our community. So that, that's, that gains a lot of weight. I'm telling you all this stuff because I think we're at a moment where we need to just open up and understand, make this weekend work, work a little harder, roll up your sleeves, and allow this weekend to happen so that we can move on and have even a better air show next year. That, that's my appeal to the council, and I'm just one person. My job on the air show this year is, is uh, water box security and, and safety. So everything that's happening on the perimeter of the water box is my responsibility. And when something goes in the water box, then we have people set up to get them out as quick as possible or prevent them from entering in the first place. But Captain Black would also would actually be the ultimate authority as far as rescues in the water box. I have nothing to do with the emergencies, only the security. And uh, this is a good thing for our town. Many small communities are having air shows. It's all good stuff. And we'll have to work a little harder sometimes to make these things happen or to allow these things to happen. Think outside the box, if you will. But, but I think it's... it's Huge travesty if we don't have if we don't have an air show. We've got momentum. If, if we fail to have the show this year, I'm afraid that it might be very difficult to get the energy that we have. The pilot, the group of pilots that we're working with, have cut their fees so far down in the spirit of this air show. In fact, one of them is responsible for recreating the air show when it was already canceled earlier. So he was so motivated, he collected a bunch of his friends, and they're working for a very small amount of what they normally get to fly around and have fun. So 
I want you to just consider that, consider what I had to say, please. Thank you for listening. Um, remember that I think your voice should represent your constituency and not necessarily your personal one person voice, but the people who elected you. And I think that overall this community really enjoyed that air show. I think they enjoyed the energy it brought to town. The type of people that come to air shows range from five years old to 95 years old, and they all enjoy it, and it's a great thing, and thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else in the audience care to comment? Ruth, and I have been a property owner here in Avalon since the late 70s. Um, I worked full-time, and I came in support of the air show. And I did work as a volunteer last year, and I think it was a really good thing for the community, and I'd like to see this go on and progress. And as a property owner and as a person here, I, I hope that you approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Hi again, Rock Oslin, 318 Whitley. <clears throat> um, I want to thank you guys again, like Steve did, for your time and effort in this. Um, I had a meeting with Denise, and one of the things she said was, you can appeal this my decision here. I was kind of hoping to hear from the uh, uh, outriggers that they would actually you know, appeal to you guys to help us help them. Uh, that not being the case for the air show and for the community. Last year, um, cash and uh, hotel rooms I supported the air show with about $6,000 in back. I didn't need to. My hotels were going to sell out. I didn't need the air show to sell another hotel. Um, that expenditure to make sure that. Hopefully in the future, you know, like Steve said, maybe the uh, Outrigger Canoe uh, Association is going to want us to work with them because we help their group. Thank you for all the time you're putting into this and have put into this. Thanks, Rod. Members of the council, I'd like to thank you for letting me speak. My name is Rebecca Bermudez Watson. And also to those that are out here, I'd like to say that I. Um, very happily moved to this island rather recently within the last three months. I've done two tours here and I did work with the um, group last year and I have worked in the past with other air shows. I was married to a pilot and I've, I'm a widow now and I'm here um, just to enjoy the island and have peace. I also know what uh, value it has in the way of revenue producing and um, when you bring this clientele onto the island, uh, it also uh, manifests into a larger group of people who will come in and bring their, their, uh, their families. It can also grow into other air shows because you have a wonderful uh, airport and um, the possibilities of bringing other groups or enthusiasts for shows not merely um, public, but for other revenue producing uh, for the city and the no notoriety that occurs. Uh, this is a tourist community and people will come. Uh, also in the way of uh, training and showing youth the educational values. Uh, the air program has always been big. Wasn't it in the 60s that we uh, explored outer space and that was a big push for us? And. Uh, so I feel like Catalina could be a big part of that, and I certainly hope that you do consider the uh, tourism and the, educational of our young, the education of our young people. And just being able to offer 
the effort for these students, children, to be public, to be able to get in an airplane and fly, um, opens so many doors that you can't even imagine. So I hope with that in mind, you do allow this to happen. All right. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Dan? <clears throat> Excuse me, Dan Tuckenoff, 315 Whitley. Um, gentlemen, city manager, city attorney. I come before you uh, asking for your discretion and looking at this event as something unique and special for Catalina Island. A little bit of the history. Last year was the first year we took on a tremendous task. Many volunteers worked hours and hours and hours for nothing. We brought revenue to this town. We brought attention to this town. We made it something that we look forward in the future. I chose to continue it against my better half. Um, we ran into obstacles again. We went to pray and we learned of the uh, event, and, and the organizers are here tonight. Thank you. Um, and the conflict. We re realized there was a conflict, and we decided to start working through it. And our first meeting was a conference call with um, you, Oli, and, and Bob, um, Bob, and uh, Steve. When we called uh, Bill, Billy, and uh, Bud. Uh, and discussed, how can we make this work for both of us? And we felt we were going to work it out. And this was probably March. We continued to hit obstacles. And one major obstacle was financial. Uh, the cost of city, county resources uh, was insurmountable. On June 6th, we canceled the air show with great difficulty. Sent a letter out, it's in your packet, saying that last year was wonderful. Let's remember it as something very special for this island. It was the people, the volunteers, the sponsors of last year that came back and said, no, you can't do this, Dan. You've got to continue this. You've got to go forward. This is very special for I, the island and for the people and visitors. On June 22nd, the pilots banded together, reduced their fees to little to nothing, and brought in a major sponsor. Our financial hurdles were over. We now had to work out the logistics of putting on the event. In your packet, and everybody has spoken on, on the financial impact of, of an event like this. When we come within 2% of selling out this town on a, in a shoulder weekend, um, it's significant. It means revenues for the businesses, revenues for the city. The business community has bound together as sponsors. Along with three off-island uh, overtown sponsors, we have 31 sponsors out of our town. And they're not just direct benefits, as maybe hotels and um, um, restaurants that will enjoy the, the boom that will happen on that weekend. But there are people like the Avalon Animal Clinic and Leo's Drugstore and the hospital. These people believe in the, in the air show. They want the air show. They want it here. We want to see it again. Yes, we have some problems. We've worked diligently with the Outrigger organization. We've put together a plan that we feel will work. We want to work on the same day. We want to make it happen uh, and continue forward in the future. We're looking at another weekend next year that appears to be completely clear. And we will proceed in that direction. Uh, I'd like to list all the sponsors because they're very important to us. 
they're what made it happen last year and will make it happen this year. But they're too numerous to take up your time. They're in your packet. It's a part of the program. Double, not only double-digit increases in revenues in the visitor counts <coughs> is another element that we need to look at. And lastly, as Steve said, this event needs your vote. It needs your vote on behalf of the constituency, the residents of, of Avalon, the visitors that come over here. The impact of bringing pilots in addition to our regular visitors, a new demographic that has never been shared before, last year's air show. We request this, we thank you for your time, and ask you to vote on behalf of the constituency. Thank you. I thought you'd like to see what uh, an air show volunteer looks like. I've seen a couple, but this is how we dress. What that says is air crew, which translated in English means slave. Wouldn't you agree, Gang? What I do during the day is I wander around and say hi to people that are having birthdays. And every once in a while, I know it's against the rules, but every once in a while, I invite them to come back for the air show. I don't know if any of you are pilots. Is anybody on the board a pilot? Hey, great. I know one thing for certain about pilots. They have to have a few bucks. Somebody gave me the cheapest airplane that there was to give, I'd have to give it to someone else because I couldn't afford to maintain it, could I? So these guys that are coming into town, I don't know, 150, 500 of them, will all have big bucks with them. And they'll come back. I met pilots when I was up at the uh, barbecue last weekend, and they were interested to find out about it. Avalon has been given the offer of a, an, an additional gift. If a cruise ship, for some reason, there was a drug war in our adjacent uh, uh, country, if a cruise ship showed up just out of nowhere on a Saturday, would we turn it away? or Would we find a way to get them on shore and let them spend their money? That's what this is. It's an extra cruise ship for the town, for the, for the community, and it's something special. It's, it's an extra name for Avalon. Big money, and it's, it's something that can create, a, you know, 20 more years. What is this, the 54th year of the Outrigger group? Well, this is the second year of 54 years of the air show. I know it's a pain in the rear. Think of it at this last minute. But please figure out a way to make it work at this last minute so that I can go out and be a slave again. So I'll have nothing to do if this is a no. So keep me working, all right? Thank you so very much for letting me take up your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience care to comment? OK. Uh, council discussion? I commend the volunteers. I commend the job that was done last year. Um, it is a very unique experience. But my issue being is that in February, Dan contacted Brian Bray, and Brian Bray told you there was an outrigger race that weekend. And that you proceeded with that date, knowing in February that there was an outrigger race is my problem. I have been listening to the argument, and you've actually swayed me on the argument. But bottom line is, you knew that the date wasn't going to work, and you kept the date. It's in, it, there was an email in February. That's my issue, is that you knew the date wasn't going to work, and you kept the date. And then you, you bring up the increase in, in people coming over. How much of that was for the race and how much of that for the air show and how much of it was for the half marathon that was going on? You know, it, you had two events going on, which is going to raise the numbers. So 
So how much of that, of that increase was to the race, or to the air show? Um, but it's, it's, and that you waited until, you, you canceled this show in June and then waited until August to put in your application for a special event? To me, is that, that's really poor planning. I, I, the, the, you've, you've won me over on the argument, but the way it all reads out is that you knew in February that the date was not going to work and continued on with it. That's, that's my big problem. Rich? Yeah, you can, Dan. Come on up to the podium. Yes, you are absolutely right. But when we met with Brian Bray, after he announced that there was a conflict, we felt that we were on our way to blend the events and make it good for both of us. We felt that we were working through it. And then when it canceled, it was over. We've had many hurdles, but we believe that the Outrigger event, and I believe the Outriggers too believe, that we can work together and make this a tremendous event. Uh, if, if there wasn't agreement, if Brian was not suggesting that we plug the sound towers into city power long after February, making recommendations on what it would do to make it easier and better for this event to work, I would have stopped. But we continued on in the logistics. Together, we all worked. So, yes, we knew the date was conflicting. And the other part is that you were promoting a show that you didn't get permission to have in the first place. And this all comes to bear in August. And that you don't file your special event permit until August. And your event is a month later. This could have all been fixed earlier had you filled out a special event permit. Last year, I filled out the special event in March. It wasn't until the last week that Steve Haves sat down and said, let's do this show. And we did it. Along the way, all the emergency preparation, all the logistics, all the airport. An air show on an airfield is not easy. But to have one, a checkout in Torrance, stationed in an uh, airport in the sky and performed over the water in a space that has got to be sterile is not an easy task. And I, under I understand that. And that, that show is over the water, and these guys are doing their race on the water. To me, that's a big conflict. That is exactly right. There are two things. One is the finish line will be in Lover's Cove. It'll be in a time period where we have no activity going on during the air show. The outriggers leave Newport Beach at approximately 8.30, and they finish their event at 12.30 to 2.30, 2 o'clock. They have 60 boats come through Lover's Cove, a single canoe with a chase boat through Lover's Cove and onto the beach. We are shut down. The perimeter box is shut down at that period. It's collapsed, it's gone. When the, when the uh, outriggers are completed, we have the air show. It's right between the rehearsal and the performance. So we're completely open. They have clear access to the harbor. Um, uh, I, I don't see a problem there. Uh, the biggest problem is, is, would probably be the moorings having enough moorings to satisfy all the outriggers and, and all the people who are in the arbor already. And we are working through that. That's our biggest task. And we're taking on the responsibility of going to uh, Tuna Club members and asking them to release their mooring. Uh, right now, the outriggers have the uh, Catalina Flyer position. And we're promising uh, at least, we have seven moorings available now for them to move on to uh, the other areas, other boats. We plan the day of the event to go out and ask for a poster and a t-shirt, would you allow a, a chase boat from the outriggers to tie up alongside of you for the night? Uh, 
we are working to make this happen. Yes, there have been problems along the way. I didn't think I'd be standing here when I canceled it on June 6th. But here we are. Dan, don't go away. Move your event to Sunday. I love the air show. I love the event. I love the energy it brings to the island. It just is sensible to me to move it one day or the one way or the other. Call your pilots up. I'm sure they want to come back and do their thing. And if we lose some sponsorship as a result of this, let's work on coming up over that hurdle than trying to fix the mess that we've created here. The show last year was right on. It scared the living bejesus out of almost anybody and everybody in this room. And a lot of those hurdles you had to, to jump over uh, were handled. Some of them at the last minute, some of them early on. The hurdles that we're climbing over now are nothing compared to the mountains you climbed last year. It was a great event. Move it one day. Make it happen. That's my suggestion to you. I agree with a lot of what Michael said, because had we been able to nip this in the bud in February, yes, I sat in on the meeting with you and Rock and Steve, and I know a lot of this stuff can, can be overcome. I was there on the phone when the outrigger folks were saying, hey, yeah, you know, we'll work with you, we'll work with you. And I think that they were saying that because they were responding to the city of Avalon as if the city of Avalon was asking, hey, can you work with this other event? And for one, that's kind of a little bit inappropriate. We don't want to step on their toes. They don't want to step on your toes. They want to work with, they want to work with you. And then we get an email saying, we would prefer not to. That's not giving them the ability to represent themselves when we're asking that question. And I think that that part is wrong. You know, for us to kind of push the outriggers, the outriggers have been pushed around in this town way too much already. You know, they started out at Desconso Beach. The island company said, hey, we're going to move them down to the complete west end of the island. And Brian Bray was the one able to save that and say, hey, wait, time out. We can use our beaches. We'll bring them back into town. We want events here. We want positive experiences for our visitors. We want more of it. Let's just not hammer it all on the same day. I don't think that makes a positive experience for a lot of folks. The comment was made tonight, would we encourage another cruise ship to come into town? Absolutely, we encourage another cruise ship to come into town. But would anybody sitting up here encourage three of them to park out front at the same time? On a I Saturday think, in August? Or on a Saturday in August. I think that would be irresponsible stewardship of what we're trying to promote here. So if there's any way possible that you can move this event one day, I would rather help you raise the money that, of, of the sponsor, sponsorship that you lose than lose the event. Okay. Can we move it? I am open to moving it if we can raise the money to bring back this for the sponsorship, absolutely. Well, so from prior conversation, the sponsor that we're gonna lose possibly here is roughly 20 grand? Yes, correct. We don't have the same problem with the harbor. Is it, can, it, can we invite the Arroger team up to make comment? Would that be inappropriate? We discussed to. this today. If, if, well, if they want to. Dan, I'd like okay. to see what we could do to move it first. I, I think it makes a better event for you if we do that. If we're talking about 20000 bucks, I mean, I was a sponsor last year. I'll triple what I, my participation. Okay. Maybe okay. we can get other people to do the same. I think it's a good event for the island, and it was fun. Okay. Let's move it. I will work on moving it to Sunday. Um, and if you can get an application to us quickly, we'll make sure nobody else steps on that date. Or just change the date on the one we have. <laughs> Let, let's, yeah, yeah. Pro procedurally speaking, the application was to have the event on the 7th. Yes. So the appropriate motion would be to deny this application or, or, or to, to deny the appeal. They could reapply for Sunday. And then if the issue is the morning issue, that would be something that would be considered, the city manager would consider in the determination on that permit. Would you guys support it being the following day? Mm -hmm. I think I believe you have unanimous support from the city council having it the next day. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, no? No, oh. not for me. Okay. I think there's an ordinance that was drawn up for this reason, and you guys 
did all the right things by appealing it, but there's a reason that the, that the ordinance was drawn up to prevent this from happening. It's kind of mind boggling that this, we're here at this time to me. And, now that, and Rich, the way, now that Rich puts it that way, I have to agree with Rich. We did, we did change the ordinance to accommodate this issue. Two events going on at the same time. Well, then it yeah. wouldn't be two events at the same time. Once the paddle, paddlers leave, that event's over. They're not in Avalon anymore. Brian, does that work with you? What time do the, do the outrigger guys clear moorings? For the 70 chase boats that come with the outriggers, whether it be on Saturday, whether it be on Sunday, I don't know if the uh, it's going to be a hit and miss to learn whether the people coming to watch the air show are going to make a weekend out of it, if it's on Sunday or whether it's on Saturday. They'll stay on the mooring is what we're saying. I don't know if something can be done where the outriggers head down to like White's Landing and get shuttled back and forth, but I think if both events happen at the same time, and Dan, I love your event and I want to see it, um, it's just that I, don't, okay, I, I won't be able to, to supply moorings for those chase boats and what's going to happen next year when the chase boats who are volunteering say, I'm not going to Avalon, you know, I can't yep. get tied up. I'm not going to go out there and anchor. But one of the one of the considerations for the council and Mr. Bray indicated that there would not be enough moorings for the chase boats. Is availability of city resources and city facilities for events on the same weekend. So I think part of the decision. Part of the rationale for the city manager to deny it was applying the ordinance to the fact that both events need a certain number of moorings and it was just not appropriate or not available to have the full use of all the moorings for the two conflicting events. The ordinance does provide that one of the factors to consider, one of the major factors to consider is which event has been in the city for historically and which also applies for a permit um, first. And in both those instances, the ordinance says that the outrigger event would take precedence over the air show. I kind of believe that your ordinance originally was brought up because you had two competitive events and it was a monetary thing. These are nonprofit type events. We're just being here. Um, and, and the fact that, that the outrigger guys are willing to work with us, and I apologize to them as well. I don't want them to carry the weight. If this is denied, then they're going to feel bad. I don't know they are. They already told me. Billy already told me that. He's, he's a great person. But if we don't start our air show until they're finished, where's the, where's the rub? If, if we don't, if we let them use our PA system to announce their boats as they fin cross the finish line, what's the rub? They can move the finish line back to the casino because we're not flying airplanes. So there's no rub. The only issue I see is the amount of moorings. And if myself and some other people are willing to drive up and down each row with a checklist and solicit moorings of people that are only, sing I know there'll be somebody on every mooring. If there's somebody sitting there with no side tie, we could go up as Dan mentioned, and say, hey, in the spirit of the outriggers working with the air show, if you're willing to have a, a side tie for tonight, here's a t-shirt or whatever. Um, that, that's, what I, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make this happen because the city, this will, could be one of the best shows ever because of the way it, we work together with another event. And we, give us a chance to do that. Don't just sit on the technicality of we have this ordinance. You know, and I respect the ordinance. And that's what gives you the tool to be able to deny us without recourse. You can say no. But think outside the box. This is a cool thing. Let us try it. Let us try it. We're going to work so hard to make sure that we don't ruffle the feathers of the, of the outriggers. That's our main goal right now. Because everything else is pretty much in place. So that, at least that's my position. I want to work really hard to get this thing going, let it fly, no pun intended. 
and, and, and allow us to have a nice weekend. And it's up to you guys. Now, I'm not sure how it works with only four votes, but... You need three votes. You need three votes. You need you a majority. You need three votes. We need three votes. Yes. Okay. I just, I just want you to know it's, it's a huge thing for the city. Yes, we're tardy in a lot of ways. Yes, we're not perfect. And yes, this is a huge mountain. Just the air show itself without the airport is a huge mountain. And the airport and the conservancy is a whole other project. So it's not easy to get to the point where we've been. So I really appeal to you to think outside the box, remember who voted for you, and think what they would want. If, if the outriggers are, yeah, if the outriggers are saying, we're willing to work with them, let's try it. Really, that's who voted for you, the community. Roger that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for reminding us of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just to follow up back to, to the technicality about the ordinance. If you don't, you could be opening a can of worms up for everything else that's going to be voted on with any other ordinance if we shut everything down. That's just part of it. Aren't there other events, competing events that were last year? We had uh, the half marathon and the air show. Don't we have the um, film festival and the uh, wine tasting on the same of it, the same weekend? Isn't don't we have common yes. ground there at all? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we do, Dan. And unfortunately, last year we were in the same circumstances that the race was on the books a year ahead of time, and you proceeded forward with the air show. Same thing, but at that time we only had to work out the logistics of Front Street happenings. They only came down Sumner Avenue where it impacted anything that had to do with the air show. So, well, we're not we're not targeting boaters. We're targeting pilots. This is a, a you are competing for an area of our harbor, and that's why they're non-compatible. I, I think. The city manager's decision is also, and it's reinforced tonight, at least from what we've heard, is that the mooring plan is on the day of the event, you're still going to try and get moorings for people to come. Correct. Okay. Anyone else in the audience care to comment? Any more discussion from council? Anyone care to entertain a motion? I'll make a motion to deny the appeal. A second. Call for a vote, please. Four ayes, one abstention. Council Member um, Morrill. Okay. Next item. Oh, let me get Ralph. Yeah, go get Ralph. Yeah, we're going to remember what they Item number seven can is. Can I go back a little bit? Yes, we can. Um, I think we need to bring back the ordinance on the special events because I think it's, in some cases, too broad reaching. <laughs> in some cases, it's not properly de defining some stuff. It's, it's, I 
I think it's more restrictive if it was interpreted, if it was uh, put forth the way it is. Sir? Good well, idea. Thank you. Another thing we probably should do too is think about the stage. Now there was an issue here where somebody went and got a permit from the Chamber of Commerce but didn't get permission from the city. Is it, is it in stone that the Chamber The, the Chamber and the city maintained. try very hard to work with Together. each other. There's, there was a little hiccup in there. But we need, maybe Wayne might have a good idea. Wayne Griffin, President and CEO of Catalina Island Chamber of Commerce. The, the Chamber's involvement in the permit process is, is the same as it is for filming permits. We are the contact point acting as an agent for the city. We process the applications. We do not approve them. It is city staff that actually approves them. We've done this because we get people come in at all hours of the day, seven days a week. City staff isn't always available. Uh, our offices are open every day of the week. And so it's a, it's a customer service kind of issue. And we've worked really closely with city staff and it's been a great relationship. Um, occasionally a hiccup occurs, but um, we're, we're simply processing the paperwork, collecting fees, which we then pass on to the city um, but, but city staff is the one that actually approves or denies the application. So, they, uh, then, then um, should be something where there's, I, I know Chamber has their calendar. Maybe there right. needs to be a little more attention on the calendar. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that with, with the outrigger race having happened for 53 years or 52 years at Descanso Beach, it was kind of off our radar screen. And it hasn't been until this year that we've reached out and started a relationship with the outrigger organization. And I assure you they will be on our calendar from here on out. Um, but to everyone in the community, it, this is the time of year we're starting to put our visitor's guide together for 2014. And part of that is a special events calendar. And you would not believe how difficult it is to get organizations in this town to give us dates, contact information, uh, fees if any. I mean, we are begging people for information so that we can help promote their events. and. It's a real struggle to get it. So I, I ask everyone in the community, help us <laughs> um, promote these events and get them on our calendar. Okay. Ralph, I think that a lesson learned probably is that the chamber and the city could work um, harder at making sure before anything's approved that we contact each other to make sure something hasn't slipped through. Thank you. Number seven is a skate park uh, renovation options. I'm going to let Jennifer Lavelle come up and speak to you on this. Back. Uh, you were just going to get me for one time tonight. OK, so the skate park renovation options. This item um, is back in front of you from the April 2nd meeting, and from that meeting you'll recall that we had discussed the broader field of dreams in skate park uh, cleanup that needed to take place, and much of the field of dreams area has been cleared, and uh, now we really need to turn the focus on to the skate park. And as everyone in the room can agree on, the skate park is in need of um, some attention and TLC. So in um, discussing what can be done over there, the skate user group uh, headed up by Monica Seals and Chris Arnold have, have come to us and their request uh, for the very first step of anything to take place would be to complete the fencing that uh, goes around the skate park area. And in their opinion, there really shouldn't be any more movement to uh, update or fix um, equipment up over there until that takes place. 
And so um, they have furnished a quote from A1 Fencing, which we've used quite a bit on the island. And um, the fencing quote that they have would uh, basically uh, rehab any smaller pieces of fencing that were once there. Several sides of the skate park, I don't know if you've been over there lately, are completely open. This side that's along uh, the Field of Dreams area is still fenced in. Um, but the parts that were towards the Las Casitas and City Hall sort of area uh, were much shorter than what we would want. And so what would need to happen, which is included in this quote, is the uh, extension on the existing poles, some more poles put in place, and then new uh, chain link stretched. This quote does not include labor, so they're proposing that to get a volunteer force to do the labor to stretch the fence and install the gates. What their um, request really at the heart of it is that they want a lockable facility. They want to be able to uh, have it open from dawn to dusk, which is uh, what is in our ordinance, and um, for the facility to be locked up in the evenings so that any investments that are uh, put in over there would remain hopefully in, in good condition. Um, that quote that they got for the fencing is $4,697.22. In your upcoming budget for 2013-2014, we had proposed to earmark $2,000 for the skate park area. So the main item of business before you tonight would be to discuss and give direction to staff or a lot um, money uh, for this expenditure. So there's a number of options that you could choose in this regard. You could propose that the city pay for the entire amount of fencing. You could propose that we proceed with a $2,000 expenditure. And um, I know that the skate group does have a small amount of money that they have collected over the years from things like the Just for the Halibut tournament, that they would be able to pay the rest of the fencing cost from. You could earmark less or more than that. It's really up to you. So I guess we're looking for some guidance on what, your, what you would like to see take place in that recreational area. You, uh, I'd like to just point something out to council, and I stand, correct me if I'm wrong, Betty Jo and Gina, that this is strictly just one quote. If, if you were to say, go ahead and pay for all the fencing, I'm assuming with shipping, it's going to be over $5,000. This would have to come back to you. We would have three, three bits. quotes yes, mm -hmm. for you to pick from. So, just. so this is just a matter of reference on the, the amount of money that we would generally be talking about. It would come back to you if you would like to decide on that expenditure. Thank you, Jen. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions for Jen? Yeah, I do. I get this little cut sheet from Denise following all the expenditures yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. From what, 95 to... What is it? Yeah, we pulled out... Um, to about 13, 2013, anyway. Right. We spent over $59,000 we spent on the skate park renovating it and getting it fixed up, is that correct? That's correct as far as um, that what we could see that had been earmarked as expenditures directly to the skate park. Um, there may have been other expenditures that had gotten coded to some other, you know, buildings and grounds maintenance, that type of thing. But for things that were specifically designated as skate park expenditures, that's what's on here. I just want to turn back the clock for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, in April, we gave direction to help clean up the skate park and, and the uh, Field of Dreams, correct? Yes. And what did we exactly do to the skate park? We demoed uh, the pyramid that was currently, that was there. Uh, okay. That was it? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Well, I just yeah, and then um, beyond since, that, since then, we, we removed the portable the pool, the above ground pool that okay, we used to do. Okay, the pool was on the, that was a temp pool, right, we had? Right, it was temporary okay. and it was still on that skate, uh, the original skate park's mm -hmm. slab. It was meant to be 
temporary and for a lot of reasons we decided Correct. to remove that. So we removed that, the pieces of which are all safely stored away at the city warehouse yeah. in case we intend to use it for future use. And then um, demoed the, the wall, that okay. big wooden wall that was originally there. Okay. And then other things that we did were just on this, the Field of Dreams property and not on the skate park property. Okay. So then right now. And there was also temporary fencing. Yeah, I, I was actually was over there today again mm -hmm. with some of the kids. And I, I saw the temporary fencing on the side still. But uh, yeah, and that, for, over the years, for $59,000, it doesn't look like we've done much over there. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't look like much to me. I mean, I'm not a big skater or anything like that. But I know it was designated for a skate park only. Now I see basketball hoops hooked up to it now out there for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny, one of the little kids there asked, and I, he was pointing out some of the things that were there for a long time. And the little kid goes, you know, I says, what are those over there in the corner? He says, those are basketball hoops. I says, really? He says, yeah, we got a lot of basketball hoops in town. We only have one skate park. <laughs> and I says, you're absolutely correct, young man. And hopefully tonight we'll help secure everything up and make this a better place for you. But for $59,000, I would think we'd have a pretty nice skate park. But, and the other thing I want to read on the bottom of this, or how much money do we have in there all together for this year? Then total donations, is that, is that minus $5,000? Is that what I'm reading? That's $5,000, 5900 from the church that, mouse over the past seven that's, years. It has a minus in front of it, so we're minus that? Well, you're, you're taking the donations of cost. I'm, of, Okay, you're taking the donations, the donations away from the, from the, from the, the total 50, expenditures. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And, and, am, and am I correct in the last three years that the church mouse hasn't had any donations towards the skate park at all? I see they started at $900 at one time. No, it's been longer than that. The last, last donation from church mouse was 2008, 2009. 2000, and that year. was $600? Mm hmm And we haven't had any donations to the park then, since then? We haven't. Okay. Okay. dokie Grand over 18 years is only like 3,200 bucks a year. So. Right. It sounds like a lot of money when you look at it all at once. However, if you consider it happened since 1995, I mean, really, that's but, especially you, considering that the nature of the skate park, it's outside. It's in the elements. But there's there's nothing on the there's there's there nothing there. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. No, as I as I stated in the beginning, on the no one here in this room, in their right mind, would argue that it needs a lot of work and a lot of love over there. So. That was my question. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Okay. <laughs> this time. I think it would be nice to hear from Chris and Monica, maybe, because I really feel what they would like from us <laughs> is just if we, if we would be willing as a city to enclose it with a fence, then staff, and if you have a, your opinion this evening, you could express it to us for the maintenance of it, the operation of it. Um, and as when we met for quite a long time, Chris and Mo, and we just, I explained our big concern, me as a staff member, that that skate park has to be utilized for more than one entity. Like Joe Machado Field, there's all kinds of users. That it's hard to take one big place and only have one user group. So they did, they, they said, you know, as it said in the staff report that Bikes would be just fine on the ramps. The razors they did not want because that destroys the ramps. And then inline skating, right, Mo? So, um, anyway. Right, so Richard had you know, asked about or mentioned the basketball hoops. It was, um, you know, staff had thought, well, that would be another way to incorporate uh, another user group for recreation in town. That's, um, we've, you know, decided in staff that that was not going to, proceed forward. The reason why that was um, suggested is because we had already had those, so it would be a zero cost to the city to, to put those up, because they're the hoops that got, that were at where the lifeguard building is now, that got taken away. But that was a temp for the, for the best, for this fire. But it still takes time to put them up and, and do whatever Certainly. you're going to do. Yeah. So anyway. Mo, Chris, why don't you guys come up, up here for a minute, and while they're making their way up, um, Chris doesn't want to come. Well, <laughs> Chris can come up and hide in the corner if he wants. <laughs> Chris, if you hide all the way back there, Mo's going to volunteer you for a whole lot of stuff. No support. You don't mind. Okay, perfect. No support. <laughs> Free shot. Well, before Mo comes to the podium, I need to apologize to you. 
our city council gave staff direction some many, many months ago to clean that place up, to put fencing around it and make it safe. We've let you down. Um, so on behalf of my colleagues up here, I want to apologize. That was never our intention, but recognize that there are a whole lot of fires, so to speak, burning in the city of Avalon, and we get a little tunnel vision, and we're looking at the things that are of utmost financial importance and so on, so my sincere apologies. Let's make, let's make this right. Yeah, definitely. Let's give you the tool. Let's give you the tools to do what you need to do to make it safe, uh, to make the improvements you need to make, and let's try to keep public works out of that machine over there and let you and your volunteers do that. How do we do that, Scott, legally and not have a liability issue with volunteer workforce? The need needs to, whatever goes on over there, whether it's the city or volunteers, there's weird nerdy attorney stuff that basically <laughs> says We're used that, to that. I know. Thank you. <laughs> we can't supervise it. The city cannot be responsible for supervising what goes on there. Putting a fence around it, um, keeping it clean, that's fine. But in terms of what's going on there, we want to keep the city and our volunteers away from supervising um, the activity there because there's a special statute dealing with skate parks that gives city immunity if you don't supervise it. Right, okay. and that's true, because it was supervised at one time, part-time, I think it was a part-time employee that was up there. A couple, little, a couple guys, and I think the last one, Royal, was up there at one point, Sean's relative. Um, and we decided, I think Pam decided back then to pull him out, because that's even when the park started kind of decaying even back then. So it was prudent to make it an unsupervised park, which is the norm right now, I think, amongst most cities. I, I've done state yeah. parks around, and there's not one that's supervised. And as long Correct. as we post, like we used to have a sign that had all the rules, and as long as you post the rules, then it's up to, it's like skate at your own risk type of thing, which is what we want to go back to anyways. We just want a fence. We used to have a fence, and it, it came down in think 2005, 2006, and I don't know why. I think it was because of that movie that was being filmed up there, the 26 Miles show, to get the trucks in there to film, and then the fence just disappeared, and it never got put back up. So part of the problem has been that, just because people have been going in there, you know, drinking, broken bottles, the sandbag situation with little kids going in there at all hours of the night, it's just started to destroy the ramps that were there, people, and then slowly the skaters stopped going up there just because you're having to deal with the kitty park. And, you know, they are getting disappointed. Their pride of ownership, I think, just kind of, you know, went down. So basically, we just, Chris and I just would really like help to get the materials for the fence. And we're willing. Got a ton of people, volunteers that will stretch the fence and we'll do all that. And then from there, we can start fundraising and you know, going back to the way the original plan for that park was. The pool got put in, I think, two to three years after we, had, we poured that cement, that cement pad. And all this expenditure that you're seeing isn't even park expenditure, it's the roller rink that used to be out there. So the skate park didn't even go in until 2001. So I mean, I added up what was spent on the roller rink, and you're looking at almost $28,000 in a span of four years that was spent on that roller rink. And that was not skate park. Skate park, in the 13 years that it's been out there, has maybe got 20,000 spent on it. And some of it, I don't even know what this is. Like 11, there's stuff on here that the McBride Masonry, I question, like what is that? Is that even really, was that even, even out there? So anyways, we're just looking at help to bring it back to the way it was. And we gave you that sheet that kind of shows what it could be and that's, that was the original plan. plan before the pool got put in there, was to try to have an area for kids you know, for dads to skate with their sons, daughters. And the pool was just, that was just a mess. 
that, that helped destroy the part too. The, the other legal thing I left out is the, the, if the city purchases the material, the erection of the fence needs to be done by an all volunteer. Um, no one can get paid for doing that. What if I bought the material? Can we still volunteer, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, it's, and, well, I think you're asking for the city to. Well, I'm asking for help, but I yeah. mean, we're, the best, we well, just well, want well, to start. What is saying <laughs> and is we've been waiting. If we, buy, and if waiting. we buy the materials, we've just been waiting, and whoever, I don't want to keep Whoever up puts here. up the fence has to be all volunteer. Right. Okay, that. And I think if we were to go out to bid, because it's going to be over $5,000, during the time that we're going out to bid, could you guys do a little bit more fundraising? And we can find out how much money we're short from the 2000 well, we have we have, budget. We have enough money to buy the fence right now. But, but, we're, but our problem is we thought we had church mouse funds. Obviously, we don't. They're gone. Um, and so we just want to get started right away. Okay. And the money that I would use... Yeah, we could fundraise. We could still do that. I could even go talk to the freight lines and see if they're up for the. Because I mean, you're saying that it's the shipping that's probably going to put it's, it over it's the five thousand. So much easier if, if the city's going to make any financial contribution, it be just for materials, right, and not labor. Right. That's, that's what yeah, we're saying. That's, yeah. So why yeah, don't no we? Labor. So why don't we donate four thousand bucks to the cause? That'll keep us under the five thousand dollar threshold. And. Could you make up the difference in ordering the materials? Yeah. Put it in and... We just want to get started. Okay. And I think the soon as we can, the best. There is, okay, now the problem too is though, when I went out there and looked, there's some palm trees that are growing all along that fence. There's a real big one right by the basketball court. What, what's growing? Palm trees. Oh, palm, okay. That are pushing on the fence. And so we would ask maybe to try to remove those. We can do it too, but six of them. They're kind of little right now, but they're getting bigger, and they're pushing on the fence that's out there right now. And we can start fundraising some more. But our ultimate goal is to get to that level, and that's why we're asking, you know, please let us just try and have our park back. No pool, no Basketball courts. No basketball. Yeah. no basketball courts. Gina has her first budget revision. No. You, write, you writing that down, Gina? <laughs> Is that an okay idea with you guys? Good, yeah. Okay. Got enough direction to staff? <laughs> Thank you. Uh oh. Thank you. Kevin's coming. You know, I, I, Kevin Striggy, 129 Olive. I want to, you know, I know Mo and everybody's been working on this for a long time. You know, and we met, we met with uh, people from the uh, Catalina Classic skateboard race, you know. And I think we all have to realize this is a family sport nowadays. It's not just the rowdy kids. I would really encourage you as we go along, hopefully with futures up the road, you know, that we have a real skate park. You know what I'm saying? Just like the ones you see in Santa Barbara or, or elsewhere, because it is something that will be used by a lot of people. So I really encourage you to include those in your plans if you do. So. One that, be, that could be encouraged is it an attraction, not a nuisance. Correct. Right? And, yeah, exactly. Seven Island Vacation Rental Skate Park. Yeah, I hear I hear a corporate sponsor there, don't you, Monica? One coupon for every visit. Thank you, Kevin. Good, Monica. That'll work. A lot of support from Chris too. Back in the day when we used to build ramps and put them in there, we had um, a car sack. We had to submit plans and stuff to you. That's, I was just making sure that, that was the height. Because if we start building, um, yeah. it was like a five foot height limit and all that. Got all that. Excellent. Okay. Before, we, before we move on with the council meeting, let's move to the. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to have a closed session on the Housing Authority. <laughs> 
Well, that's why I was going to okay. open the housing Brown. authority Brown. meeting. Brown. Relax. Brown. See, city attorneys are geeky. <laughs> this is true. That's not the word I have for it. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> we'll let you ad lib that in closed session. Okay, well, I'd like to call to order the uh, City of Avalon Housing Authority meeting of August 20th. Uh, roll call, Denise. Commissioner Hernandez. Here. Commissioner Ponce. Still here. Commissioner Olson. <laughs> oh, wait. Commissioner Morrow. Here. Chairman Kennedy. Here. Uh, do we have any Housing Authority announcements or written communications, Denise? No. Oral communications. Anyone in the audience care to address the City of Avalon Housing Authority for any items that are not currently on our agenda? You may now come forward. Not seeing anyone race to the podium, uh, consent calendar. We have one consent calendar item, and that is the actions from the July 16, 2013 Housing Authority of the City of Avalon Board of Commissioners meeting. Recommended action is to approve them. Hey, would any uh, member of the audience and or council like to dis have any discussion regarding the actions? If not, anyone care to entertain a motion on item number one? Yeah. Did Oli move? I he, he moved. <laughs> he moved. I was, my lips were still moving. We have yep. a motion and a second call for a vote, please. All eyes. Okay, now Scott. Okay, we have a closed session this evening from the Avalon Housing Authority. Scott? Uh, it disappeared. disappeared. <laughs> Actually. Do we need that closed session for item number two? Yes, we do. Okay. Yes, because right. we didn't have to do one. I yeah. got it. Rather than that, selection benefits. Okay, so we have for the Housing Authority, we have conference with uh, real property negotiators regarding property at 320 Sumner. Negotiators are uh, Ms. Maddie and myself. The negotiating party is Lal Kati. And under negotiations are priced in terms of payment. Also have a closed session on the city council meeting, conference with legal counsel, existing litigation, subdivision B of section 54956.9. That's regarding the Avalon K through 12 school site at 200 Falls Canyon Road. Aren't we the housing board right now? Yes, but well, I just did that because we're going to have the concurrent meeting. Oh. And we don't get paid extra for concurrent. Huh? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we are going if you to become a charter city, disappear maybe. and go to closed session. <laughs> you have anything for us? You're just hanging out in the audience. You can go home now. <laughs> we're we're going to ditch out and go to closed Okay, hey, we've returned from closed session. Would you care to report back, Scott? Yeah, on the Housing Authority action, the council authorized us to accept the offer uh, for the purchase of the Sumner property. A unanimous vote. Okay. Uh, commissioner's reports. No, now no, 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 no. we need the formal the resolution so we can actually. We can't adjourn this meeting first? No, we no, have, have, to do have the a resolution business. on oh, the housing. General business. Go ahead, Scott. I'm sorry. General no. business is uh, 320 Sumner Avenue, the sale and the lease of the property. Um, an offer has been made for $176,000, and the Housing Authority Board of Commissioners can accept this offer. We're asking that you approve the sale of the property located at 320 Sumner Avenue and direct staff to complete all necessary paperwork, including lease pending state approval of the sale, and adopt the resolution authorizing the sale of the land at 320. So moved. Second. Box is off? Getting ahead of the game here. See? You weren't the only one. Wants to get out of here. Okay, call for a vote, please. What? Oh, it's a double on, huh? And it, and it, and it. All eyes. Okay. Now, Commissioner's reports. I mean, you didn't go back to the city council meeting. No reportable action out of closed session on city council meeting. Okay. Council member reports. 
All right, we're out of here. No, oh, wait. I have no, one. Wait, <laughs> I have one ugly bit of news. Okay. Um, there's currently legislation before the state, which I believe is going to pass and be signed by the governor, amending the powers of the Coastal Commission. Currently, the Coastal Commission does not have the ability to impose fines for violations. It's one of, and so the legislature has decided that since all the other regulatory agencies in California have the ability to levy fines, and it's much easier to levy fines than to file a lawsuit, the Coastal Commission should have that same ability. If that happens, we can imagine that there'll be increased enforcement of coast, by the Coastal Commission because if they find you've done something, they'll just fine you for it. They don't have to sue you. So um, the League is, is trying to oppose that, and uh, we will do what we can, but it's got a lot of momentum, and it's probably going to pass, and the state will further what's, regulate you. And what's get next? Money. Are we going to allow them to bear arms, too? <laughs> going to partner with the uh, IRS now, right? right. Absolutely. Yeah. The NSA. Anything to report, Denise? No, you're not. Right. We are adjourned. Wait. Oh. What? I asked council members. You said no. No. Couple things. Oh, dear. <laughs> Keep them count. Three. Well, I think we all received an email last month from a gentleman about some recycled paper bags. And I think we should possibly direct staff to look into it. Maybe give it to CRR and let them look at it. Something like that. Um, and then I want to report that you and I met with, um, we were directed by the council to be the city's representatives in the freight line RFP proposals meetings, interviews. And we met today with uh, Martin Curtin Maritime. And Bob's going to get to do it by himself next month. <laughs> also, yesterday we met the Allen Company about their proposal and about some draft points for the DDA, and they've given us some draft points. They're going to draft a draft DDA and give that to our city attorney so that we can go down the path. Right, Bob? Right. I forgot that. And on that note, it would be <laughs> nice to uh, draft a letter to Southern California Edison on the behalf of the city, get them to the table so that we can discuss the way they manage water and the things that we need to do to implement improvements to that process so that they can better serve the citizens of Avalon. Hopefully we'll get Mr. Hyde here maybe next meeting. That would be kind of nice. I would like to have him back again, yeah. if we could, if he's... But in the letter, let's go up the ladder. CC Ron, but let's send it, let's send it to whoever's making Ron's decisions, the decisions ahead of, yeah. of Ron. And if we can get him back, Denise, that'd be great. I'll, next meeting, if he possibly could. I don't forget the party Thursday night up here. Where? For what? We're having uh, a fee meeting next Wednesday, 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Day after the church mouse party. You, did you do that on purpose? Just ask, just ask. Okay, we're adjourned.